Hey everybody, we're doing another video today. I deleted the video yesterday because it had a, like a ton of incorrect information. I think I just tried to make a real quick video and didn't put enough research into it. So sorry about that. Ultra Beat and Drum Machine Designer are essentially the same thing and it's a, a great tool. So my feelings about, man, this is still something we should be using ends up being way truer than I thought we're still using it. And um, so there. Today, we're moving off into some new directions. I think one of the things about my channel is that I like to get into some of the things that are in the weeds, but there are some other channels out there which really cover a lot of that technical stuff, and they go through and, and really do a lot of the research on why things are like they are in Logic. And honestly, I don't have a lot of real interest in spending that time doing that, but I use Logic every day on projects, uh, music that gets released, film scores, uh, audio engineering projects, music release projects, tons of things. And so I still like making these videos and showing things that I discover along the way. The thing that I had done a video about last week was the Doppler effect, which is part of the binaural pan functionality. And one of the things I was really frustrated about was that inside of an instrument. So say I've got a retro synth here and I want to do the binaural pan to move it around inside my headspace. Um, and I want to use some of the cool MIDI effects like the modulator to move this around. Well, what should I think just be so easy to implement is not that easy because say I have this and I want to come down and let's learn a plugin parameter. First of all, this isn't a plugin. Okay. Tells me that a lot because one move actually moves a bunch of different parameters. That's another issue right off the bat. If I want to learn MIDI, It doesn't, this is before this in the MIDI chain. So it really doesn't work well to use this really cool modulator effect with a binaural pan object. Now, there are a few things around that we can do with this. So one of them would be, for instance, we could do the binaural post-processing, which doesn't do the same thing. It's actually very different. So don't be fooled into that. We could do direction mixer, which would move the image around using very similar or even the exact, I don't know, but it could use, it has essentially some of the same effect moving things around in what we would consider the binaural space. Sure, has a spread on there and everything. We could with this then with modulator learn plugin parameter, and then have it control it like this. But this has less uh, options in it. So what I want to do then is show you the way that I ended up getting it to work here. And besides that, that only works on instrument plugins. You can't use it on audio track. So even though this has that mustard color of the drummer, this is a bounce in place. So it's an audio file an audio track. I can't add a modulator to this track at all. Let me play the drums for you for a second. And I'm gonna, there we go. So that's an audio track. And I now have a modulator, this modulator right here. Let me close these other ones. This modulator is controlling the binaural pan of this audio track that has that drum beat on it. So we're using our environment to do this. This is one of my favorite things about still having the environment. I'm glad they didn't get rid of it. But we're sending this information out first of all on this one. I've done another tutorial about this. I'm just gonna recap it really quickly. On this instrument track that has that modulator, I'm using the external instrument, sending out on the IAC, which is the internal MIDI bus in OS X, 
So it's like a tunnel that goes out from logic into the system. And then inside of our environment, I've got another physical input, and that shows the IAC driver. And I put that into a transformer, and then back into this channel right here. The transformer, all it is doing is moving this. It's fixing it as a fader status, channel one. And then the first data byte is 25, and it's passing data byte two through. So why did I choose all of that? Well, the simple answer is, is that I didn't choose any of that. It got chosen by logic. Let's um, once again mute or turn off that modulator. And we'll go back into our environment for a moment. I'm going to click and drag on our little binaural pan here. And you'll see... It is showing me, I, I attached a monitor out to this, this channel strip. And anytime we do something that has MIDI attached to it or some control data, in this case, the fader information, it shows me on the monitor what it is. So F1, and right there, it's actually 26 when it goes a different axis there. But if you go around the outside, it's 25. And it has all the data around there. And so I took that information, put that into the transform so that we were converting the output. What I wanted to do was convert the output of this modulator into that data that could be used there. I just did it on a, on a random MIDI controller. Didn't matter really because I'm telling it to change it after it goes out of there. But it sends it out on that. It gets converted into the one that this channel thinks is going to be the binaural pan. And now I can uh, set up this whole system. In this case, I'm using essentially sample and hold type randomization. And I can change the rate if I want to. I can make it any other part of data. I like the randomization in this case. And so now we are moving around that drum sound in the binaural field. Adds a nice little flavor to the stereo image for our drum patch. Could be used creatively, you could use it in, in any number of different ways, but I think it's a really great way to be able to use this modulator plugin with the binaural pan option that we have on our tracks. Okay, hope this was useful. I hope you found something in there. Again, I've made other tutorials on this process of using our MIDI effects on other tracks. It's a great way to be able to take advantage of what I consider one of the biggest weaknesses of Logic right now because we should be able to use these effects on all of our tracks at all the time and be able to easily route them. And so I'm hoping in another version or two of Logic that this type of workaround won't even need to be there. Okay, that's it. Hope you enjoyed this. Of course, there are other ways of doing something similar. So uh, check out other videos on YouTube or post in the comments if you have a different way that you like to do it. Uh, I don't think that there's a right or a wrong way in this case but I hope that you're getting what you need from these videos. Thanks.